Today we're talking about change. So City Sisters, it's a new series, new sisters presenting, new viewers watching, and a new set. But in the real world, change is something we can look forward to. For instance, when someone's getting married, or when you found that better job, or even if you've decided to give up chocolate for that bowl of fruit salad. It's the happy moments in life which we should appreciate, the change in, in our lives, you know. However, change can be unsettling, you know, moments where we may feel almost out of our control, you know, that feeling of anxiety and restlessness just dawns upon us. Just when you feel that life is going good, nobody wants that change. But the real thing about change is that it's inevitable. We need it to enable us to grow and walk on the same path in life. It is about testing our character, most importantly, to renew our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sisters, if you can sum up what change means to you in three words, what would they be, Anissa? Okay, for me, I know it sounds really simple, but it's ready, steady, go. Ready because, you know, you always have to be prepared for the change. Life is not a simple road. You know, it's got lots of ups and downs. It's got lots of ditches. But the path that's set, you know, inshallah for us, you know, is going to be good. Whether it's bad, you know, whether it's exciting. Um, so, yeah, just be, you know, prepared. Um, so that's ready. Um, steady, be patient. Be really patient with whatever Allah gives you, you know, and, and you know, if, if there's something that I've learned along my path, it's Qadr Allah, you know, really just trust in Allah and, you know, just be prepared for whatever he gives you, you know, um, and then go, actually take your intentions into action, you know, so that you can just, you know, not just be sitting there, okay, one day I'm going to wear hijab, one day I'm going to wear hijab, no, 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 take that action and go. You know, put the hijab on. You know, inshallah, Allah will make it easy for you. Mm. So mine is definitely ready, steady, go. Wise words. I've definitely Masha taken Allah. that on myself. How about yourself? Well, um, mine would be scary, exciting and nervous. Nervous because whether I'm scared or excited, I'm always still nervous. A bit like now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're here to help you. We're here to help each other, inshallah. <laughs> you know, Liz, at times we fear change. Why do you think that is? We don't kind of like to, you know, step outside of our comfort zone. It's much easier for us to stick to, you know, our old habits and old ways of doing things. Um, but it's like um, Allah says in the Quran when he talks about old nations that um, worshipped idols just because it's what they saw their forefathers doing. You know, it didn't make it right and it was only when they kind of stepped outside of that and, and sort of challenged that that they you know came into the fold of um, Islam and alhamdulillah reaped the benefits of that mm -hmm. but I think you know we, we are scared of people's reactions you know when people see us changing and people see us behaving differently mm -hmm. you know that does that is a bit threatening to us mm -hmm. but I think you know inshallah as time goes on and you know our sort of friends and family around us see the positive effects that these changes are having on us, then it's easier for them to accept, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. I definitely think that support, supporting one another during change is it's so vital. Um, what motivates one to change in Islam, Anissa, do you think? Okay, well, I mean, I, 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 there's many things, but I think one of the biggest ones to look at is death. You know, really, because that can prompt a sudden change. I mean, if you see somebody, you know, young around you who've, who's just taken ill or died from an accident, um, I think that can, you know, make you step back and look at yourself and say, wow, you know, Allah can take me at any time, you know, so you have to be prepared. So, you know, I've seen it happen a lot um, where, you know, Again, people, young people, teenagers and stuff, who think that they've got their whole lives in, ahead of them, yeah. you know, time to practice, time to make that change, and, um, you know, you know, something hits them very, you know, hard, yeah. and then they have to make that change. And, you know, um, there was something that happened recently in our community. Not only did it affect the families, but everybody mm -hmm. around, even if they didn't know the people, but there was a death. And that woke a lot of people up. For me, I think I would just like to add another point in there is what motivates change. Personally, I've, with what I found and my friends and close family is that knowledge. Yeah. You know, the more knowledge that you acquire, particularly about Islam, you, you realize what's missing in your life, mm. what you need to add to become a better Muslim. Liz. You've got a comment as well. Well, I just um, wanted to pick up on Anissa's point about, um, you know, sort of life and death and, and contemplating the amount of time, you know, that we actually have on this earth mm -hmm. to kind of do good deeds and, and you know, inshallah, get rewards. Because um, there's a, a, you know, really nice hadith that actually says, um, you know, there are two blessings which many people lose um, and they are health and free time for doing good. 
So, you know, I think that's really important to remember. Yeah. But actually, you know, we have all this time and, mm. you know, whether it's only sort of five minutes or ten minutes or, you know, a few hours, we should actually try and fill it with doing, you know, doing good deeds, mm. inshallah. You know, like yeah. carry the Quran around with you and read it, you know, if you've got a spare five minutes definitely. or on your commute into work or something like that, yeah, inshallah. Definitely. Also, um, um, I just found out that while we were researching, someone has a, a set yeah. an alarm clock on yeah. their phone yeah. to say to every day to remind them of death because as human beings, we're so forgetful yeah. about the things that are really matter and why we're here mm. that really that reminder would make your day change a lot of things that you wouldn't yeah. do anyway yeah. Yeah. what is the significance of change in Islam Halima well when I first converted um, I had to learn the significance of um, you know why we pray five times a day to understanding you know why we wear the hijab etc and you know um, Islam doesn't change it's the people that change to become better Muslims mashallah you know and um, it's just a learning curve yeah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that how you know it's we have to change within ourselves mm. and then Allah will change the condition around you yeah. as sisters coming into the deen the faith you know it was a really massive change for you and taking this shahada really defines the past and the present doesn't it Liz? It, yeah it certainly does and it certainly uh, you know is a huge change in in anyone's life and mm. you know i can remember when i first um you know took my shahada and first became muslim it was you know it's amazing the sort of the mm. way the change you know just kind of grows organically around you yeah. it kind of runs away before you really know you know what's going on <laughs> but um, I, I mean certainly I, I can remember I always used to be one of those people that would kind of think oh I don't care what people say about me you know I like to be different and mm. you know I like to be you know I don't like to be one of the crowd but <laughs> it, it's funny when you actually become somebody that's different to the crowd and different to all your friends and you know not not doing the same things they're all doing that, that you you start to realize how strong a person you know you are and you, mm. you kind of have to be to go against the grain yeah. even for us Habiba yeah. you know as born Muslims you know by name and then starting to practice Islam it's, yeah. mm. it's something similar isn't it? Well you know it's one thing saying that you're a Muslim and totally different to actually living your life yes. by the Quran and the Sunnah mm. subhanallah and somewhere between the two is where change has taken place for me the most no, is, is when I decided to practice and really fell in love with my deen my mm. faith and um, you know that required me to change a lot of things about my life from the way I dressed the way I communicated with my parents I dealt with them to the way I thought, you know, just mm. all facets of my life. And I think what we have to remember is that living life is living through changes. Let's wrap it up in a good note, inshallah. Mm. So what's been the most memorable change for you and in your lives, Anissa? I think for me, it was um, having my first baby. Yeah. Um, you know, that was like a big change for me because uh, from when I took my shahada till I got pregnant, I, I went through a very, very slow change. I mean, I used to think that having a bandana on and having all my hair out was hijab, you know. Um, but it was, um, one brother said to me, you know, and he, Anthea, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to bring up this baby? You know, what are you going to teach it if you haven't made the change within yourself? So that for me was like, you know, a really big wake up call. Mm -hmm. And I had to instantly change. You know, I didn't have any time to change. Mm -hmm. I had to review myself, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Habiba. Your uh, it's a tough question because you know you go through a lot of changes in yeah. life and they're all um, big in their own right but the one I can remember because it's quite recent was when I decided to wear the jilbab yeah. and you know I, I remember that day that I was gonna go to work and I opened my cup cupboard and I said okay you can't wear this anymore you can't wear that you can't wear yeah. this and I, I wore my jilbab and it did feel weird and you know I, just, I was so anxious I just wanted to get it out of the way for people to ask me all the questions yeah. get out of the way and but alhamdulillah you know I mean I'm, I've been wearing it ever since and it's the best decision I made and you can wear the clothes just underneath the abaya yeah exactly <laughs> yes you're just dressing up for yourself but uh, I agree with you all sisters alhamdulillah that was very good but you know boy Change is one topic that never changes. <laughs> but I'd like to conclude from an ayah in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and certainly we should test you with something of fear, hunger, loss of wealth, lives and fruits. But give glad tidings to the asabirin, the patient ones, who when afflicted with calamity, say truly to Allah we belong and to him we shall return. And that is in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 155 to 156.